thank you and thank you for the opportunity to come here and uh, present Restone uh, at this uh, conference. As Ivan said, uh, it's absolutely crucial uh, regardless when you have an injector well and especially when you have a, a CO2 storage well that uh, the, the well is uh, gas tight and you don't have any leaks either to the overburden or uh, through the sea and to, to the air. So what we have done, uh, we have developed, or not developed, we have used a mineral. As you can see, there's, it's a mineral that can actually change form if you expose it to water. It could be fresh water, it could be salty water, it could be brine, and it can be a CO2 as well. So it has the ability to expand by 30% in volume or, uh, put it on another way, if it's exposed to CO2, water, pressure, temperature, it will expand, it will close the voids or any leaks you have in the cement, and then it will seal off and the process stops. So let's say you have a mini earthquake or you have a tubing that is expanding, or a casing that is expanding due to thermal effects uh, and so on. Uh, and if the uh, cement cracks, you get what we call microanally, and it will uh, start leak. It will activate our mineral. It will seal. It will. Uh, 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 retighten, uh, close the path, and it will stop. And that will continue on and on for the eternity or until uh, you have fully exposed it to the, um, to the maximum expansion, which is about 30% by volume. So but what's important here? For getting this to expand, you need water. Uh, any form of water, brine, salt water, fresh, as I said. You don't have to have CO2, but it doesn't do any harm either. It's actually beneficial to have CO2. And it's also inert for H2S, so H2S won't uh, affect it at all. So that is basically what Replug is. Uh, what you will see on my next slide here is... Uh, an ex um, a test we did, we ex uh, exposed uh, uh, our, this is a four centimeter high cylinder, it's just from a test we did with, uh, together with Sintef. So we exposed it to 80 degrees Celsius and up to 200 bars. And here you can see all the red dots here. What is that? That is the porosity in the cement. So if you have a continuous path or a connection of those red dots, then you will have a flow path. And, and that is uh, <clears throat> what we are actually aiming for, for sealing off. And they can come naturally during your cement job, or they can come uh, from an external force like a mini earthquake or anything. So, so those are the ones we want to seal off. Here you can see after four weeks, there is a lot of small blue stuff. What is actually this? It's crystals that builds. And I will show you how it actually looks uh, under a CT scanner. So here you can see, there you can see there is a small crack on it. All those are uh, black ones, are uh, porosity or uh, open weights, if you like. So you can see after just four weeks, uh, with exposed to uh, supercritical CO2, that I have actually sealed off many of those uh, many of those uh, uh, voids or uh, the porosity. So you can see it from the uh, the upper yellow uh, arrow that the um, that the crack you have that's sealed off, and also in uh, tests we have done where we have uh, sliced uh, uh, a sample, 
and put it together again, exposed it to uh, CO2 water under pressure, under uh, temperature, and it actually seals so good together that if it cracks again, it doesn't crack where it has sealed together or been glued together. It's actually uh, cracking on the si side. And that's the same principle as you see if, uh, if you have two steel plates and welding them, the new crack, or if it, if it breaks, then it never breaks in the weld. If the weld is done properly, it always breaks on the side. So it actually becomes stronger. And this, this process here, that will go on and on and on. As long as you have flowing water, can be with or without CO2, it will continue self-heal. So that is the beauty. And, uh, and uh, well, I didn't say that. My background is um, drilling and wells. Uh, I have seen, I've been working uh, both as a well service supervisor, also as a senior drilling supervisor. So I have seen quite a number of wells, not only in Norway, but I have been working a lot international. It's the same problem everywhere. Leaking wells, pressure on the annulus, and so on. So, but that we can't afford to when we have a, a CCS well. Then we need to have it absolutely gas tight. So this is uh, well proven. We have tested this, uh, especially uh, RKBP, Equinor, has been uh, crucial for us. They have been very, impo uh, very important. They have been supporting us. Uh, we have also done this now. Uh, we have set eight plugs so far this year. And uh, we are waiting for the ninth plug this year. Oh, sorry, eight plugs in 2021. The ninth plug will, uh, will come in a few days or weeks. They have spudded the well, and we are supposed to uh, P&A that well. That's together with Equinor. So, 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 but this is the whole, uh, the whole uh, secret behind the plug. Also, you can see another uh, picture here, uh, where you can see it starts, you see the the uh, porosity, we have cut it in, the, in, in, in two, that did a CT scan of it. Uh, so you can see that it's actually building and it's uh, protecting the core of the cement. But if you here get a, a flowing water, with or without CO2, it doesn't matter, then it will start sealing off all those cracks. Here you can see, has, this is after one week, this is after four weeks. So you can see the core in the middle here is protected. All those white dots, as you see, the big one up on the, on the top here, is all sealed. There's no leak path. Uh, and, and, the, and the white stuff, what you see on the side here, is the crystals. But it is not as strong that it actually can break the cement. It's, 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 it, is, it doesn't break up the cement. It's, there's not enough, uh, enough uh, energy to do that. It will just go into the natural cracks, natural pores, and it will seal, seal off. Uh, all the tests we have done has been together with uh, uh, Sintef and Harriet Watt University. So it's that all Everything has been uh, done in a third party, but we have also used the cement lab with uh, Halliburton. So we have an extremely good collaboration, both with Halliburton and Slumberger, which is the cement provider. We are not the cement provider. We uh, sell the product to the cementing provider, which again sells it to the uh, final customer. And of course, for those of you that have a background from uh, drilling, drilling and wells, I can see there's uh, some, at least here in the audience, that have uh, experience. So from the uh, Verbat, uh, it says that yes, a cement today, it shall be uh, long-term integrity. It shall uh, 
uh, be impermeable. There will not be any flowing path. No shrinkage. Uh, able to withstand impacts. It can come from earthquakes. It can come from, uh, from uh, expanding tubing due to uh, or, or casing due to temperature, thermal effect. It shall be resistant to H2S and CO2. Uh, bonding to tu tubulars, that's an obvious, and not harmful to the steel tubular or integrity. And it doesn't. So, so, so it fulfills all the requirements, either if you look at the API standard, uh, the UK oil and gas standard, or the NORSOC DO10 standard. So, uh, what challenges do we actually solve? Well, the biggest one we already talked about, that is the uh, my, uh, microanaly that comes in the cement. Uh, and also, it's probably the best cement you can use in any well that has uh, CO2 present. CO2 is actually eating. Uh, ordinary cement. So, so that is a well-known... But of course, you have other additives that is good, but I don't know about any that is excellent. But that's my claim, of course. And uh, we are able to custom blend, meaning that if, depending on what characteristics you want on, the, on your cement, is it, uh, is it high tensile strength you need? Is it a high sealing capabilities you need? Or, or how much, or, or what, uh, what uh, uh, properties are you actually looking for you, uh, in your cement? So we can do that with uh, various, of course, the amount we use in the cement, and also the grain sizes we use. So all depends on what you need uh, for your uh, well cement. And of course, it self heals. And the most important to take after of it, it self heals with water, brine, salt water. It can be water that coming from naturally from the ground. You don't need the CO2, but it is. Uh, it, it does. Uh, it, it just reacts faster with CO2. CO2 is good for our stuff. And we also, we also say that when you mix your cement, how often doesn't you test the chloride content of your mixing water because you want your mixing water to be clean? Well, we like when it's dirty. It just accelerates the process. And also, uh, this is not a process that takes years and decades. We're talking about weeks, days, a month as long as it's exposed to any of these, uh, uh, or to water, pressure, temperature. But of course, it goes on and on and on. So if you have flowing, either water, CO2, then it will go on and on and on until it has expanded fully the 30%. And uh, one thing that's also important uh, is cost. Cost is quite important. At least that was I was uh, thought when I was working uh, in various oil companies. Always think about your cost. Well, for C, uh, CO2 storage wells, it's even more important. But here, you know, there's no need for any extra capex for, uh, uh, for new equipment, new storage tanks, uh, and the uh, HSE measurement you need to take extra. You use the standard equipment you have, you mix in our product to the, uh, to the cement clinker, and, and you, send it, uh, uh, the, the, you send it to offshore uh, or onshore or whatever, as you would do for any other cement. And of course, it's very, very important for me to say, that these, this type of cement should not be used only for uh, CCS wells. It works same 
in any wells. So if you have an oil and gas producer or, uh, or going to P&A a well, as long as you have water present, yes, you will have this effect. So, so for any wells you drill, if you want a safe well with long-term in integrity, then you should use uh, our product. And what, who are we raised on? Well, we are a fairly new company, small company, uh, but it was uh, founded by Astri and Yil back in 2016. There has been a lot of experiments. We have been working and are working extremely close with Harriet Watt, Sintef, and the University of Maryland. Uh, so everything we do, we, well, we test it ourselves, of course we do, but we also always have third-party um, third, uh, third uh, verification. And we test them together with our customers uh, like uh, Halliburton, Schlumberger, Baker, Tucker Weatherford, whoever's doing cementing as a service. And, and, and finally, uh, who makes it possible? Well, of course, that's always the end user. So, so for uh, proving this one, we have had a, uh, have and had have an extremely close relationship with the uh, cementing team in Equinor and Aka BP. And, and we have uh, kept uh, petroleum cells unit in Norway uh, informed in what we do all the time. As I said, it has been used now for eight plugs. We have done, uh, we are doing the ninth as we speak. Uh, we, are do, we have also logged it. We have used it uh, inside, uh, uh, inside uh, tubing casing for PNA purpose. We have used them outside, uh, uh, both uh, casing and tubing. We have logged it. Uh, CBL use it. Uh, so we have all the standard uh, cement verifications logs that you can do. We have done it. Or our clients have done it. But we have all the reports uh, available. And we are more than happy to share our uh, qualifications reports. Uh, actually, they are. It's possible to download them. So, so the, the company headquarters, well, it was uh, started in Bergen, but uh, oil, where is oil and gas? Well, uh, of course, uh, it's in Bergen, but we have uh, moved the headquarters here to Stavanger. That happened uh, just a few months ago. And we are a material technology company, uh, and we have two main pl uh, products today. One, the replug. That's what I have been talking about, focusing on uh, oil and gas wells. Our background is from the oil and gas industry. That's what we know. So it's naturally for us to start there. But all those uh, benefits also works for something we call RESAM. And what is RESAM? In uh, Norwegian, I would say it's beton. In English, it's concrete. So, but uh, we are coming there as well. We are uh, developing it. We are a proved producer of it. We are, according to beton quota, we can use it as a filler. So you have all the benefits there as well. But of course, in oil and gas, you have higher temperature, you have higher pressure, so the process just goes faster. So, but there's coming more news about the resam on a later stage. So, so, and today it's a CCS, so I'm focusing on CCS. Here is our team, uh, of course, this uh, presentation here. Um, it will be uh, available both on our website, but also on the, the Bologna site, so you can also download it. So you have all the contact uh, details to the people working there. So, thank you for your attention. If any question, I still have a few seconds left. Thank you, Ingmar. One of the things I think about when I think about cement is that it's um, associated with the high CO2 emissions when you produce it. How, how's that with your product? Very, very good uh, point. Uh, what, we, what we sell and produce today, there's hardly no emission at all. 
we uh, it's uh, it's from the tailings from the uh, mining industry. So so uh, there is a zero emission from uh, up to a certain amount uh, as long as we use the tailing. Uh, when we start uh, when we come over the amount of the tailing, then there will be uh, a. Sh I, I'm not, I don't have it 100%, but it, it's, a, it's a fraction of what you have in cement. If you see on the cement clinker, there's between 800,000 uh, kilos CO2 per produced ton. And we are in the range of, uh, I would say, uh, 100 plus minus. But, uh, but I need to come back to that. If, if you need that answer, I have Astrid with me, so he, she can probably say it. Thank you very much, Ingman. Okay, thank you.